this vector over here. Okay, how will you think of finding AD? Any ideas? How would we find AD? Make use of the 2 over 7. Okay, so uh, BD is 2 over 7 of BA. Okay, so that means AD is how many un uh what's the ratio of AD to BA? 5 over 7, right? Okay, so this is actually 2 units. Alright, based on this fraction over here, we can see that this refers to 2 units, this entire thing refers to 7 units. So this BA will have to be 5 units. Okay, so therefore, uh, seeing that AD is 5 over 7 of AB, okay, how do we find AB then? AB is equal to what? What is AB equals to? Hello? Um, uh, negative OA uh -huh. Negative OA plus OB Okay, negative OA plus uh, OB That is because this is AO plus OB Okay, some of you haven't gotten the hang of it Negative A plus so B minus A So 5 over 7 bracket negative A plus B That will be the vector for AD Okay, we can manipulate, good. Okay, from here we can manipulate OE over EA. 
Okay, take this divide over, 5 divide over, that is equals to 2 over 5. Alright, so therefore the ratio between OE and EA is actually 2 over 5. Okay? So please be very careful in making use of what you are given. I do not just quickly jump into the conclusion. As in 2 units of OE is equivalent to 5 units of EA. Uh, this is how we understand it. Okay? The first writing infection ratio, they are just a different presentation. Okay, so this means that 2 units of OE okay, can be formed by 5 units of EA. Alright? So maybe let me adjust this point. So maybe somewhere like that. OE, 2 units of it will give you 5 units of EA. So the ratio is 2 is to 5. Okay. Although this is only one time, so you need two times of it, then down to five times of it, you will match. They will be equivalent. Alright? So total, okay, for OA, that is seven units. Do you understand? Yeah? Shouldn't EA be longer than the EA? Be longer than we know what? The first of EA is longer. 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 EA the joint is only a presentation okay, for you to move on to the next step. Are we agreeable to this? Okay, so that means whole length of OA, that will be 7 units. Alright, then OA is 2 units out of the 7, EA is 5 units out of the 7. Okay, we actually want to find ED. Alright, just now my question was trying to find out what is ED so that I can check whether there is a scalar multiple or not. Okay, now that we have broken down that this piece of information, how do we find out what is ED? How do we find ED? Use EA plus AD, is it? Okay, and what is EA? 5 over 7 of what? A. And AD, we have already found in part A, okay, that will be 5 over 7 of negative A plus B. So, extending this, we will see that we get 5 over 7 of B. Okay? Does anyone not understand what I've done so far? Is are you okay? Look at me like... So what? Okay, the oh, okay. The O-E search is the arrow. Huh? The O-E? Yeah. This one is, sorry, this one is not the top. Yeah, it goes. The arrow. Arrow at the bottom? At the top. On top? Yeah. No, it's relation of length. Yeah. Okay, the relation of length, the, the ratio of the length, okay, is similar to the ratio of the vectors itself. Okay? But we just keep to the length okay, because that's what we figure. Right, so ED is actually 5 over 7B, which is actually 5 over 7 of OB. So therefore, since there is a scalar multiple, okay, that means that ED is parallel to OB.
Similarity. How do you want to use similarity, Miano? Can you tell me how do you want to use similarity? Uh, like the OB over A, A, B over AD. AB over AD. Uh huh. Uh, check whether it's equal to A over A. Okay, then. You must prove that the two triangles are similar, then you use that the angles are going to equal. Then after that, you must use your alternate angle, interior angle, or corresponding angle to prove that they are parallel lines. That seems longer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but okay, I would suggest that if you're looking at vectors, right, you should just stick to using vectors first before you go into using similarity. Similar, similar triangles, okay? Similar triangles, okay? And, yep. Okay, uh, this homework 5C, when put it? Sorry, 5B was, was still on Wednesday, right? Friday. Friday? Yeah. Yeah? Alright, let's move on to next one, next section, last section two. <coughs> this is where the difficulty is going to come
equal sides. And what else? Parallel sides. Parallel, right? So if they are parallel, okay, we know that they must be scalar multiple to each other. But for parallelogram, we know that they are of equal sides as well. That will mean that okay, they must be exactly the same vector. Because exactly same equal vectors will give you the same magnitude. Alright, so for parallelogram, okay, you should be able to deduce that the two vectors will have to be equal to each other. Okay, it does not have to just be a uh, scalar multiple. Alright, under what kind of quadrilateral would you then think about scalar multiple of each other? Trapezium. Okay, kites don't have a parallel, parallel lines. Huh? Okay, so uh, we will look at trapezium, then we will think of uh, scalar multiple. Okay, that is if the parallel lines are actually not equal in length. Alright, so as long as the uh, parallel lines are equal in length, okay, then we can deduce that they are going to be equal vectors. So with this, okay, AB itself, how do we find the vector? How do we find the vector AB? Uh, OA by observation. By observation. How to observe? Down here, no diagram, no no units for you to count. Mm, count yes. Yes. You got the coordinates already. Like, do we need to go about doing that? A O plus O B. So that is negative O A plus O B, right? Then after that, D C will be negative O D plus O C. Agree? Okay. We can make use of the coordinates given to us, okay, which is relative to the origin O. So negative OA that will be negative 3, 7 plus OB negative 1, 2. OC. Okay, we do not know what is OC, so let it be XY. Coordinates of C. Gradient. We can find gradient. Okay, gradient of AB is equal to gradient of CD, but we got two unknowns. Then we also need gradient of BC equals to gradient of AD. Okay. Find midpoint. Uh huh. Good. Find midpoint. Okay. Point of BD. 
okay, because it's a property of your parallelograms that the diagonals actually bisect each other. Okay, that's why, right, in AMS itself, we have read, after learning this, we have concluded that we shall not use simultaneous to solve anymore because that is too lengthy. Okay, using a midpoint will skip having to do all these simultaneous steps. Alright? But of course, okay, now that we have learned a third method by using vectors, right, uh, please just keep the midpoint method to, e to A max, okay, and then uh, this one, you can use the A max method, okay, but if the question asks for vectors, then please do by vectors. You can use this in E, e max, okay, you can, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? Just that you don't want to use vectors in AMAX. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, you try not to use vectors in AMAX. Yes, here we go. Do by observation, there's no diagram in the first place. So there's no observation. This question did not give you a diagram. Okay, so that you cannot do by observation. You cannot draw it out. So don't do by drawing, please. Okay? I don't want you to waste your time to go and do a skill diagram, uh, draw every single thing. No. Right, please don't do that. Yeah. Okay, I would prefer not non observation methods, right? Because if you want to do observation, then it's very hard to communicate. You can observe this thing, but it doesn't mean that the marker can observe the same thing as you. You understand? Because you are sending to them uh, a paper, a solid paper, not your brain, you know. They cannot just take your brain, install into their brain, into their head, and then be able to process what you're thinking. Right? So that's why presentation is very important. Okay, it's not like a hard disk. Uh. Okay, with that, I want you to do example 18 on your own, alright? If you want to have PQRS as a parallelogram, and in second case, PRQS as a parallelogram. Okay, using vector method. Yes. By accurate drawing. This one, yeah, we just learned.
one answer. Uh, one answer. What's your answer? Eight six. Ah, eight six. Eight six. Yeah. Oh. 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 Right? 
question, you are given that DABC is a parallelogram where AB is 8A and then AB is 4B. Okay, the point F on DC is such that DF is equal to 1 quarter of DC. So, DF is 1 quarter of DC. That means DF is how many units as compared to DC? 1 unit as to 4 units, right? So, that means the whole of DC is 4 units. If this is 1 unit, FC will be how many units? 3 units. Okay, I'll take note that I'm looking at units, okay, not looking at CM or anything because it's only a ratio. Okay. So then after that, it says that the lines AD and BF when produced meet at E. Okay, in A part 1, we want to find out what is AC. Okay, I think AC is something simple that we have already looked at already. So how do we find AC? Uh, Brian, yeah, what do you think? What is AC? AD plus AB. AD plus AB. Okay. So that is because if you want to look at two vector adding up to give you AC, AB plus BC, BC, okay, this is a parallelogram, will be equal to AD. So I'm just writing very clear workings over here. If you understand, you can skip away these uh, two steps. So therefore, AC will actually be equal to 8A plus 4B. Okay? DF. How do we find DF? What would DF be equals to? One quarter of one quarter of DC, right? DF. We agree that it is one quarter of DC. Whereby DC, since it is a parallelogram, DC is the same as AB. Agree? And AB is actually 8A. So therefore, DF will be 2A. <coughs> yes, you can. DF is one quarter of DC. Yes. DF is one quarter of DC. Huh? So now that we have found the F, so that means FC would be actually what? FC is equal to what? You can see as 8A minus 2A, but that is looking at the units itself minusing each other. But then uh, let's just be very uh, careful about the units being used. Okay, FC is actually 3 quarter. Okay, what did I say? The units being used. Huh? Oh, it's the last thing I said, sorry. Uh, be, must be very careful about the direction, uh. sorry, not units. Okay. So, 3 quarter of DC, so that would be 8A. So, therefore, 6A. I do not recommend that you take 8A minus away 2A. Okay. So, because that did not take into account the direction and all that. Okay, it's just a very, um, uh, what should I put it? A very it can lead you to having mistakes, uh, okay? Because you're looking at that in that case you're looking at magnitude. Right? We didn't really consider direction. Because technically for vectors, if you take minus two a then it's going backwards. So it doesn't quite make sense in vector terms. Okay, next we look at part four, we want to find out what is EF. How do we find EF? Now, how do we find that? Okay, triangle DEF is similar to triangle uh, DF CBF. Okay, is that the only similarity? Okay, triangle with our DEF similar to triangle DEF. Just how you say CBF, huh? Okay, anything else? <coughs> AEB is also similar to DEF. DEF, AEB. Okay. We are able to identify these two. Okay. 
Okay, when it comes to factors, using similarity concept, we need not actually prove it because it can be proven very, uh, very easily, right? By looking at AA similarity. Okay, let me just run through how do we actually come to this conclusion. DEF is this triangle over here. CBF is this one. Over here, these two angles, okay, are actually equal to each other because of vertical, uh, vertically opposite angles. Agree? Then after that, because AD is actually a part of the parallelogram BC, so the line AE right will actually be parallel to BC. So therefore, this angle over here will be equal to this angle. So just now we said that the F angles are actually the same, and the angle E and angle B will be the same. Angle E and angle B. Okay. So uh, then after that, getting the third angle to be equal, right? That will be simply using the angle sum of the triangle. So by AA similarity, we can conclude it. Yes. Okay, yes. So we can straight away just say, but please just do a verification. Don't just make the assumption. Okay, you must be able to easily deduce that they are similar. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, it cannot be based on the assumption, huh? or, or you take it for granted, or, or yeah, cannot base it on an assumption. Okay, then after that for AEB, that will be the same. This is a common angle over here. Okay, then after that, um, since these are parallel lines, corresponding angles will be able to give you that DEF is similar to AEB. Okay, it will also be an important conclusion, right, for us to then see that if this is similar to this and this is similar to this, surely these two triangles will have to be similar to one another as well. Okay, that is also a necessary um, conclusion for you to use in future, just in case, but not in this question now. Okay, so now which one, which pair should we actually be looking at? Right? Why is it that we look at CBF? Why do not? Why would we want to use AEB? Okay, because AEB, right? We don't have many information. We only know part of it. Okay, we don't have this entire length over here. We do not know this part. But, but so that's why the entire triangle here is doesn't give us more, much information to allow us to conclude anything out of DEF. Yes, Vernon, you're saying something? We know DEF, what? We know DEF, we know DEF, we find DEF. We find DEF, then can find? ED. Because right? You only have DEA. But we only have DA. We do not have EA. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah okay? So you get what I'm trying to say? Okay, in case you're lost, huh, we are trying to find out what is EF. Okay, so if I were to use, for those that can't seem to follow, if you want to use these two triangles to be similar, okay, we want to find out what is EF, we want to find a vector, but let's find the ratio of the magnitudes first. So EF will actually be over EB, correct? Then after that, we will need another pair, right? So in this case, we somewhat know something about DF, alright? And then after that, we also know something about AB. Alright? But then, okay, the problem comes when we do not know what is actually a EB. Okay? So it is not helpful at all. In contrast to if you were to look at the other one. <laughs> we are likewise trying to find out what is EF. Okay. EF will be corresponding to BF. Right? Then after that, uh, we know that DF okay, will be corresponding to CF. Agree? Okay. Uh, surely from here the diagram itself, we cannot find out what is BF. Alright, we do not know what is BF at the moment based on your part A, uh, part 1, 2 and 3. But we can find BF easily by looking at BC and CF. BC we know that it is AB. CF we have already found it in part 3. Okay, 
Whereas in this option over here, to find out what is EB, we will always be lacking this information of EF. You understand? Okay, because that's something that we do not know. So that's why we will choose to actually look at these two triangles instead of these two. So sometimes if you're very stuck at looking at one pair of uh, similar triangle, you might want to consider looking at another pair of similar triangle that might be helpful. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So EF to CF, right? EF to CF, we already know that the ratio is 1 is to 3. So therefore this is equal to 1 over 3. Okay. So that means that EF is equal to 1 third of EF. Take note that in this case, we're looking at the magnitudes, this refers to length. They do not refer to the vector itself. Okay, because EF is a direction going downwards, but BF itself is a direction going upwards. So therefore, if I want to draw a vector conclusion, EF is actually equal to one third of FB. You understand? Tikaya? Can I find C B and then what? C B and then E D and then find E F by looking at similar triangles, is it? C B E D. Do we know what's E D? C B. It's just C B divided. Huh? Sorry, what? Because CBF is 3 times of CBF is 3 times of EDF. For lengths, why? Uh-huh, then. Yeah, so, in the way CB, you can just write EDF. So, 3 ED. 3 ED equals to 1 CB. Yeah. Then, uh-huh. Yeah. So, then you can find EF. By? By looking at FD plus or uh, e, ED plus DF, is it? Huh? Is it? So you want to find out. So I just found out ED first. Okay, so you want to find. Use CB to find ED. Then EF equals to ED plus DF. Okay. Uh, can also, I think. Can I finish that first? Then I explore this option. Then after that, what did I look at over here? So EF is equal to one third of FB. What is FB? FC. FC plus. Will be FC plus. would be we have found in part 3 right so 6a cb is actually negative 4b so therefore ef will be equal to one third of 6a minus 4b Right? Let me try that option. Huh? Since... CV will be... Uh-huh. C B over D E is equals to F C over F E, right? Three C B equals to three times of D E. So therefore
guys are one thirty. One thirty. If I guys are one thirty. Two eight, one plus two eight. Yeah, correct. Ten. But the thing is that it still requires similar triangle. Yeah. Doesn't matter, right? Okay. So you could actually apply this method. The other method is also fine. Both definitely require the fact that these two triangles, the two triangles are similar. Okay. What I'm trying to drive at is, it at is uh, to, com to make use of similar triangles okay, to look at the relation between the lengths okay, get out there to be able to get the uh, relation in terms of the vectors You understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. We will continue with the area part tomorrow Alright? And then out there hopefully tomorrow we can finish up 20 and 21 